Welcome to a Care Lab on Neo Phoenicia Falcata. In my case, this is an update, and my previous video on the other ones are linked below. Not an update for my Neo Phoenicia Falcata, the normal, the most readily available form, because I didn't feature that in my previous video. In order to get more channels involved with a Care Lab regarding Neo Phoenicia Falcata, I've kind of expanded it to this commonly accessible and in many collections. And you can see we've got 11 channels participating today for the care of Neo Phoenicia falcata. Previously, the Care Collab video was focusing on the Neo falcatas that were actually like a Goja Fukurin, Set Susan, the, the named varieties that go and take off and show different characteristics of leaves in their variegation, or just also bloom color can be a factor. But Back to all the channels that are participating today. Thank you so very much for your time. It is Neo Falcata time or Vanda Falcata time. Lots of blooms in this care collab, I hope. All the links of all the other channels participating today are in my description below. So let's get into it. You can see that my Neo Falcata is going bonkers. Happy days. I have seven spikes that are so far developing and maturing. And unfortunately, in my climate here in southern Spain, neo blooms don't last very long when they have to deal with hot, dry winds, which I have been having a lot of lately. My average temperature in the past 10 days since my neo started opening her spikes was a 30 degrees Celsius average with an average humidity of 20% plus hot winds, dry winds. I personally love it, but when it comes to neos, orchids in general, that is stressful. And then if you have delicate and cute little blooms like these, that is even more detrimental to them and their longevity. So my first spike opened and it was this one right here and it's already going over. You can see the blooms are yellowing. And my second spike is still doing all right. So is my third spike, still looking okay. The winds have stopped. We might get a little bit more out of this Neo now that the winds have abated a bit. The fourth spike is already really at far advanced. And the fifth spike is coming along. I now find myself more often than not in my blooming alley at night in order to just appreciate and enjoy this gorgeous lemony powdery sugar fragrance. Very, very elegant, a very, very exquisite little fragrance that this one exudes. And there's a lot of it, clearly, when you have more blooms, the stronger the fragrance. So I'm really hoping that I have this one around for another two weeks. And you can see that my setup is not the conventional style. I don't have any more neos that are in moss, but this neo falcata is relatively vigorous. It is doing really well in the Lekka and self-watering setup. It has a whole pack of ceramics right in the middle of the root all there, but it hasn't stopped. It never faltered or flaunted. I believe that I need to up my fertilizer on this one. I've been very, very conservative to say the least. I've been fertilizing at 100 parts per million, but when it started pushing out the spikes, it was also trying to get some help from its older leaves. So they have been absorbed and some have actually dropped. That is also the nature of the beast. It happens as the orchids age, but it shouldn't happen so fast on smaller fans. And I'm going to up my fertilizer now to 200 parts per million, just to help it along and stop any more of the leaf absorption dynamics that I'm currently getting. But it's doing well. Unfortunately, in my climate, I cannot sustain root tips for very long. I do mist this orchid on a regular basis during the day but eventually root tips will die with that dry heat if it doesn't make them into the pot quick enough. So that's why they've stopped growing, which is unfortunate, but I've also got a lot of roots of the season already in the pot. And I did this repot last year during the summer, so it's been exactly 12 months in this pot and it's grown beautifully. It's added new fans, and I don't intend to change the setup for this orchid any given time. The more that the orchid grows, the more it's going to consume the pot, and also eventually roots will start to dangle out over the edge. So this one is solid. In my Care Collab video, the original one, where I featured my Gojo Fukurin, here is an update on it. 
I did put Akadama on the surface so that I could encourage some of the roots. I have this also set up in Deca semi-hydro style and I was looking forward to just getting very long roots. That's why I have these very long pots. And surprise, surprise, the Goja Fukurin did bloom for me this season. I was astonished to see that spike. And then I thought, I'm gonna have to nip it off. I don't find that the orchid is strong enough, but then I thought, you know, let the orchid do what it's gonna do. The minute I see stress on the leaves, that spike is coming off. Well, those blooms lasted a good part of about four to five days, no more, and I didn't have a fragrance, but I got to see the blooms and they were just a smidgen smaller than the original Neo Falcata. So that would be my Neo Venetia Falcata Gojo Fukurin. And here's my Neo Venetia Falcata Schutteno. Bloomed for me last year, but not this year, because it is not doing so well. You can see that I had some crown rot because I was doing a lot of misting. I mean, that was like four months ago, but it has stopped and the apex is now growing again. It has a little side fan that it started also last year. Also had some crown rot, but it is not declining any further. And it has some roots, some, going into the pot, of which I am very, very grateful because I wasn't sure about this one. As you can see the root over there, it just frazzled up and died. Hence, my misting was a little bit more increased to make sure that that root maintains itself. Yeah, and then I risked the crown rot. But it's doing okay. I am really, really a little bit anxious about my little Shuteno here. I don't want to lose it. The cutest little blooms with the pink spurs. Very, very elegant little blooms but I think that it's going to be okay if I can just back off on misting so heavily. And for that reason, there's also Akadama on the surface because I'm not sure about the status of the roots in the pots. I'm watching leaves. I'm watching what's going on at the top of the pot to make sure that I can see that the orchid isn't in stress mode. The leaves aren't shriveling up. Here's my Neo Flakata Setsusan. Same problem I had to mist as the roots were starting to grow. And then I put more Akadama around the base to increase the humidity. I've got one root, cutest little pink root tip there. And it's curving down into the cup. So I'm gonna be watching that as well. I really would like it to go down in, even though it will hit this layer and maybe one day just do a curling around the cup thing. So. I am not 100% happy with this solution for my Neos, but I am not going back to mossing. You can see it also has some crown rot, which is now under control. And even though I have so much of the Akadama around here, I'm losing the growing points of the root tips. Very challenging to do it this way. I would have thought that they would have taken off like their predecessor over there, the Falcata. I also lost a fan here, which is a shame that happened earlier in the season. So it was all going really, really badly for my Neos in this setup until the weather warmed up and I could have the hot air counteract what I was trying to do to get the roots to grow. And here's my little Neo Phoenicia Falcata Kibana. It has no roots in the pot at all. It's just there and all the roots are growing out and away. So I put a little bit of Akadama right over the top of that root to keep it hydrated. You can see that it branched for me earlier in the season, which was great. And then they stopped as well. Story of my life with the Neos here, which I can somewhat accept and tolerate, but not if a Neo has absolutely no roots in the pot. But the thing is that she's doing okay. This leaf is growing. She's not a really fast grower for me. Clearly, she's not a happy orchid, but this is the new leaf from when the last time we saw her in that first video, and it has extended, and I don't see any shriveling or decline on the subsequent leaf down there. I lost a few last year based on the setup change, but in general, I have to really baby the little ones. So they are all indoors in my dining room, getting a lot of bright light, no direct sun, but a lot of fresh air, the fukiran in them. They get a lot of breeze coming through. 
when the winds get so hot and forceful, I actually do shut the terrace door just to protect them a little bit more. My Neo Falcata, on the other hand, lives outdoor all year round. It can tolerate my temperatures all the way down to five degrees Celsius, and it is putting up with the heat based on the setup during the summer as well. In the summer, I don't have my Neo in direct sun. It is in the brightest shade I can provide it in my south facing blooming alley. And then in the winter, it is on the east side, literally on my patio table as a centerpiece, where it will be in full sun for at least six to seven hours a day, depending if there is sun or not. I do flush them a lot, especially this one now. Increasing the fertilizer, I don't want anything to become too accumulating in the pot. I want to make sure that my media stays without any salt buildup. So there's a lot of flushing going on. And in the winter, what I do with this one, as it is not an active growth, it is dormant, but it has a self-watering setup. I don't want my leca to dry out. So all I do is just flush the pot through on occasions and then set it back into its mask but I don't fill the reservoir with water until such a time that the orchid itself wakes up, which is around about March in my climate. And then the leaves themselves start to become more vibrant in color and suddenly more leaves will grow. That is a sign for me. It is the right time to start administering water, leaving water in the reservoir and starting with the fertilizer. This year I had a very, very mild spring, so I didn't kickstart the fertilizing as normally, I would go starting March this year. It was actually only in May that I started applying fertilizer to my Neo, and I believe that is why she was absorbing quite a few of those older leaves. We're gonna change that now so that we stop that dynamic. However, here's my thought. I have been ooming and eyeing, and toying with ideas of how to make a better setup for these little Neos, without using moss. I'm tired of the moss year in, year out. I used to do it twice a year and it was just getting A, too costly. And because of how wet I had to keep my moss, it would look really, really nasty and unpleasant very, very quickly. So the Shutano here is doing quite well. I've got roots in the pot. I just want to observe and make sure that this apex doesn't decline any further. The others, I am going to be watching my setsusan with that root and see what it does. But what I am thinking now is to get back with my mozzarella basket like this. It could be mistaken for a netted pot, but it is not. This is coming out of a tub of mozzarella balls that you put into your salads. And I'm just reusing them for my orchids as and when needed. And I used to have this Neo back here tied to this pot and then moss around it because it had all the aeration going on in the middle. Now, without using moss, I am thinking this pot, but to do it with hob material, the extractor fan material that I use for the mounts and that I have been using also for my ICU setups. And then do a classical Neo kind of thing if I can to protect roots like that, like this, and do a, let's say, an inorganic version of the moss setup for Neos. It is going to be fiddly, and that is why I haven't pulled the trigger just yet, but eventually I am going to have to do something because long-term, this is not gonna fly. The roots are not going in the pot, but they need to get hydrated. And I can't unpot this one and bend this root to such a degree to get it into the pot because it will definitely snap at the apex because they're quite stiff. Even when I get them super wet, there won't be any flex in them. So those are my Neos. Introducing my Falcata here and updating on the ones that we saw in the previous video. Plus, bringing my little mozzarella baskets back, thinking of doing a setup change, but using hob material which of course is a still an idea cruising around in my head. Otherwise I would have already done it and been able to update here and now, but these things take time in my head. One day I'm just gonna go, that's it. And then we'll do a video. It's gonna be fiddly. It's 
going to be nerve wracking, but I want to film it and see how it goes. Meanwhile, thank you so much if you've made it this far for watching my video. Thank you also to all the channels that participated. I think it is great to get away from just the named ones that we featured before. This has brought in a whole new gaggle of channels, which is amazing. Welcome to all the newcomers channels to this Care Collab. So looking forward to seeing your Neos, your environment, how you take care of it, your setups, and more blooms, hopefully. And one last thing, if you have a Neo Falcata or any other named variety, it doesn't have to be Shutino, Kipana, Setsusan, or Gojo Fukurin. If you have a Neo Falcata, if you have a bean leaf, tiger variegation, anything like that, and you want to join us on these Care Collab videos, future updates, please, please leave me a comment, make yourself known, and we shall take it from there and get you on board the Care Collab initiative. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much for watching. If you have any questions regarding what I'm doing that I didn't elaborate on, and if you haven't seen my original Neo Care Collab video, again, I will link it in the description below. But any questions whatsoever on the fly, off the cuff, leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to elaborate. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Please, please stay safe. I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, take care. Bye.